this is Laura, aka The Jam Jar Junkie. For my first tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint a strawberry shaped jar. I found this jar at Walmart on the aisle with the canned and jarred fruits. The next thing you should do after choosing your jar is to remove any labels or stickers. If you have any trouble with this, just soak your jar in hot soapy water for about an hour. You will want to use a cotton ball or a tissue with alcohol to cleanse your jar to remove any fingerprints or residue before you paint it. Make sure to clean all sides, including around the rim. After cleaning your jar, make sure to rinse it and let it dry completely. Now you are ready to paint. Go put on your old clothes, and if you'd like, you can put on gloves and a face mask at this time. You will want to prep your workstation before you get started by covering it with some type of newspaper or an old t-shirt. If you are working outdoors and use a newspaper to prep your workstation, you will want to use something to hold the corners of the newspaper down in order to keep it from blowing up in your project as you are working. You can use rocks, clamps, or anything that you have on hand. Once your work area has been prepped, you will want to choose a shade of red that you would like to paint your strawberry. I will be using burgundy for this project simply because that is the color I have on hand. I got this shade at Walmart. You can choose any shade of red you would like because as we know, strawberries come in a variety of colors. You can even choose a strawberry shade if you would like. However, do not limit yourself to this project only if you plan on doing other projects. You are ready to begin painting your jar. You're going to want to make sure that you paint around the rim really well. For that, you'll have to turn the can on its side a little bit. And now for the hard part. You will have to let your jar sit in an area to dry for at least eight hours before you touch it. You may want to give your jar a second coat after it dries. After you have given your jar a good seven to eight hours to dry, check it to make sure that it is fully dry before moving or touching it. You can use the end of a paintbrush stick to gently poke around the rim of your jar because this tends to be the area where paint accumulates and takes the longest to dry. If that seems good, check the bottom and the sides. I previously checked my jar before bringing it back in the house. If you touch your jar too soon and paint pulls away, you'll need to add additional paint and give it more time to dry before checking it again. If you are craft challenged, you can stop here and have a cute little strawberry jar. However, I have a couple of recommendations. Always use a clear paint over your work as a sealer. You can use a spray paint like this one, or you can use an acrylic like this one. I got both of these at Walmart. It always helps to spice up your jar a little bit with some ribbon or twine. I like to use this jute cord that I got from Walmart. I recommend wrapping your jar about three to four times. Leave enough ribbon hanging loose where you can make a pretty bow around the top. This gives it a bit of a country feel. And cut it and you can make your bow. Stick around to the end of the video and I will show you some ways that you can use your jar. Moving on with my group who are a bit more crafty, the next step that we will do is add some seed to our jar to make it appear a little bit more realistic. You will need a cup of water, a few paints, you will need a yellow, I'm using Golden Sunset, black for shadows, brown for the seeds, this is brown oxide, you might want a white for the highlights, a small brush for your details, a disposable plate to mix your colors and throw away when you are done, a napkin 
to keep your brush clean. I also did a Google image search and found a picture of some strawberries just to get an idea of what the seeds should look like. I will be squeezing just a little of each color onto my plate palette. We'll be using mostly the Golden Sunset, so you might want to squeeze just a little bit more of that color on your plate than the other colors. We'll need a little bit of brown, a little bit of this bright yellow, and just a little white. I'll hold up my plate when I'm done to show you what it looks like. Try to keep your colors separate on your plate because you can mix them as you need to when you're creating your seeds. Now it is time to start forming our seed. Don't forget you might like to have a picture of strawberries up to, as a guide when you get ready to paint your seed. I will start by using some of the darker yellow and I think I'm going to mix it with just a tad of the brown. And let's see what that looks like. If you use a drawer like mine, you have these little diamond shapes that's easy to follow along. Remember, your seed are going to be fat at the bottom and get skinnier toward the top, just like a strawberry that comes to a point. And there's my first seed. I'll paint a few more seed and show you what it looks like. And then you can borrow along and do some as well if you'd like to. Remember your seeds are not all going to be the same size and color, but that's okay because real strawberries are not all the same size and color seed. diamonds the same way. I'm now finished painting the seed on my jar and I want to take a minute to show you guys what it looks like. Our next step is going back outside with some clear spray paint to seal our work. We are now ready to paint our clear coat over the top of our strawberry jar to seal it. You want to paint one good layer. If you'd like to paint a second layer you can. Remember to give your jar about seven hours to dry before you bring it back inside. You want to check it like I showed you before, just to make sure it's dry first. I already checked mine outside. Check around all the sides, the bottom and the top. Then we're going to add some of the jute cord that I showed you before in the video for those people who stopped before they made their seed. I measured out about enough to wrap the jar three to four times, leaving enough left over to tie the ribbon at the end. And I think that helps give it that nice little country look to it. And I will give you, I'm straighten that up and put it in the center. And I'll give you a couple of ideas of how you can use your jar. I promise to give you guys some ideas on how to use your jar. My first idea is to make it into a little lantern. By getting one of these little tea lights that's battery operated, you can get it in any big chain, any craft store, Walmart has them, and just simply drop it into your jar. This will make a lovely little jar to use on a picnic table if you were having an outdoor picnic with your family or friends. It gives that nice, soft, warm glow. You could use it outside at nighttime to give it that pretty glow. You could also use it at a dinner party inside your house or just at nighttime if you just like the way it looks and want that pretty little look for your house. Another way that you could use it would be put your silverware, your plastic forks and spoons and knives inside of it for your guest to pull one out to eat with. Again, you could use this at a picnic, dinner table, inside, outside. And my third idea for you is to fill it up with some type of candy or after dinner mints. That way, if you have friends, family, children over, they can 
get one of the candies or mints after they're done eating their dinner. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me some feedback and tell me what you think. Give me a like if you like it. You may leave any kind of comments that you have, suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. See you next time.